this is Tita Lavinia of Tita's Pageant Tree. And for this episode, I have someone super special. And I say this all the time. I have an interview. But this one is special because I know a lot of you are waiting for this. I did not even think this is going to happen. But we have, of course, Miss Universe Philippines, Quezon Province. Who else? Atisa Manalo. Hello, Hello Atisa. Ano ba tong uh, interview natin? English ba to? Nang hasang-hasa tayo? O Tagalog? Tagalog, Tagalog. Tita. No, oh, lumalaban. Lumalaban. Atisa, kamusta? I'm good, Tita. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. It's been so long. It's been so long. <laughs> At bakit so long? Kasi hindi kami bati ni Atisa. <laughs> Pero okay na kami ngayon. At mabuti na lang, maraming salamat sa iyo at sa team mo for arranging this. Um, earlier last week, you had a coming out party <laughs> as the official candidate of Miss Universe Philippines, Quezon Province. Alam nga naman sa Pasig tayo, alam nga naman Kainta, alam nga naman Quezon Province talaga. Okay, our viewers have a lot of questions at uh, tatanungin natin yan. Una-una, <laughs> bakit ngayon? Bakit go na tayo this year? This year I'm ready. This year I prepared for everything and I feel like this year I can actually make it happen. Very good. Iba yung confidence, definitely. Because the last time I talked to you was in 2018. Siyempre, dating baby ka pa yes. talaga nun. And there were a lot of um, hesitations also. And you were competing against the crazy best. You were up against a Catriona Gray. Yes. And you finished Miss International. That's like first runner-up sa book natin. Okay. Ayoko na kayong pahabain pa, na manunod pa kayo ng content na ilang minuto. Eh, umpisa na natin sa pinaka-umpisa-umpisa. 2018, right after that, you finished first runner-up at Miss International. As someone who was really young at that time, ano yung mindset pag natapos ng isang international competition? And I'm asking this because I'm handling girls now, and some of the girls na nahandle ko, I realize hindi nila natitake positively yung nangyari sa kanila doon. Please, we never got to talk to you right after Miss International. Ano yung naging feelings mo nun right after finishing first runner? I was really happy with what I got in Miss International, which was first runner up. And after that, I was really looking for the next thing to do for me. Okay. Because I always have goals set in place whenever I try to do something. And at that time, my goal was being in Filipinas. And then I didn't know that I was going to win. Miss International. So the goal after Binibini Filipinas was Miss International. And after that, I thought I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something where I would grow as a person, where I would face challenges and conquer them and make me a better person, a more knowledgeable person. And that was business for me. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for opening this one up because a lot of um, naysayers, those who have watched you, have like this huge question mark. What has she been doing these past couple of years? So, kasama sa mga line of questions ko sana sa iyo was, did you go into business? We've heard, of course, your partnership with Kumi. We've had like articles written about it. But we also want to know, ano ba nangyari kay Atisa? Did she go back to school? Did you pursue other things? So, fill us in kung ano nangyari within those years na medyo hindi ka namin nararamdaman. So, right after Miss International, um, I went into business. I started my own startup. Started my own startup. <laughs> I did my own startup. It's a food and beverage company, and now we have seven seven brands across um, our portfolio and a lot of branches all over the Philippines. So I was handling the finance of it. I was doing research and development. I was dabbling also a little bit into operations and marketing. So basically, everything that you need to do to create a business from the ground up. So, talagang dun ka, dun ka talaga nag-focus. So, if people now are saying, you know, what has she been doing? Pues, guys, eto na yung ginagawa. Now, I'm asking this question because when you started in pageantry, medyo naambunan pa kayo ng idea na ganda lang ang puhunan. Pwede na. Until, of course, Catriona Gray started speaking up and everybody leveled up right after yes. that. So, I guess the next question is, itatanong ng mga tao sa sa'yo, have you been working on causes? Are you... Um, partnering with organizations, ano ba yung mga pinaglalaban ng isang at isang manalo ngayon? Mainly what I do now as an entrepreneur is I work with an organization called Alan Academy okay. where we believe that the best way to empower children is through education and a holistic way of education which teaches global citizenship, um, social skills, and more so entrepreneurial skills. 
I think that's also very important now because one of the things that I also um, like bring up when I train some girls or may I make sao sao <laughs> is that you have to talk about financial literacy because hindi kami na ampo nandon kaya wala ang pera palagi pero you girls have the opportunity to talk about financial literacy because apart from being models and apart from being beauty queens a lot of you are really successful in your own field so paano ang business paano ang mga iniwan na bagay lahat ba in order ngayon sa pagsali mo? Oh yes, very much so. Before I left the company, I made sure that there are people who are gonna take over my responsibilities because I was very hands-on for five years in the business. So right before I left, which was the beginning of this year, I made sure that people are gonna take over my responsibilities. So I'm still a director, but I don't have a daily role anymore. And I used to have that. I see. Yeah. So very accommodating naman pala. Which is, guys, um, I just want to give you like a little bit of a background. Napansin ko rin kasi sa iba kung mga nai-interview and the other girls who would join pageantry na hindi lang din pala yan basta-basta go ka na lang sa pageantry. A lot of them, especially those who are working, would also talk to members of um, the company to probably lessen the load and help them out. So, guys, may mga pageant girls tayo na hindi naman nawawala ng trabaho <laughs> na medyo nag-pause lang. So, Alisa, 2024 na ngayon, when you were in our consciousness 2018, medyo matagal na rin ang, you wouldn't really notice it because when you competed, ikaw yung baby nung year na yun. So parang every time nakikita ka namin, bata pa rin siya, bata pa rin siya. So please, reintroduce yourself naman to this new group of pageant fans na nakikisaw-saw sa awa yan. Pag-usapan natin yan mamaya, pero wala na rin yan pa silang masyadong alam sa isang atisa manalo. Please, give us a little bit of an introduction. Ano, saan ba galing? Apart from Quezon Province. Um, okay, what, what do I have to say? How do you even introduce yourself? Diba nga? Yan, sabi ko sa inyo, mahirap ang introduce yourself. I am Maria Atisa Manalo. I am 26 years old. I was born and raised in Quezon Province. I stayed there for 20 years of my life. I moved to Manila to join Bilibina Filipinas and then right after I ventured into business and now I'm doing Miss Universe Philippines. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, um, let's go back to 2020. So the core of this interview is what happened in 2020. Ano, ko ba context o hindi? Wag muna. Ano na natin magsalita si Atisa. Okay, um, a little bit of context lang din. So in 2020, Finally, nag-break away na ang Miss Universe Philippines sa Binibining Pilipinas. Now, as a fan, that's a sore subject for us because solid tayo sa Binibining <laughs> Pilipinas. Of course, it was then, hindi pa natin naintindihan that these changes will, you know, settle into place and magiging acceptable naman. Um, so, in 2020, aba, maraming masama ang loob. <laughs> aba, nakita ka namin at inaantay ka ng mga tao. It has been two years since your last time, so kung may clamor this year, Mas grabe yung clamor noon. Pero nakikita ko nga is very J-Lo Ben Affleck ang drama natin this year. Di ba? Si J-Lo, when she first got engaged with Ben Affleck, there was like so much buzz about it. They called off their engagement. And then years after, they're now married. So I feel like this is pretty much the same. There was like huge clamor for you to join Miss Universe Philippines. We saw you. There were photos. You were there. You answered the questionnaires, you got the number, and then you backed out. What was that all about? I I was very young still then. Yes. Yeah, I was... Okay. You're still young now, girl. <laughs> I feel older. <laughs> older, but young still. <laughs> I was very young. I had a lot of things going on in my life, personally, mm -hmm. that I felt like I wasn't at my best. Okay. And even the way I think wasn't at my best. Mm -hmm. So I did something very, like, at a whim. Okay, so thank you for clearing this one out because there have been so many of us uh, bloggers. Kasama ako dyan, isa ko sa mga nag-point out nito. In fact, our thing became so big, it became an article somewhere. <laughs> Your tagline became a tagline of Tita sa Tajiki. In fact, we're gonna make like a merchandise out of it. What oh did I do God. wrong, Tita Lavinia? <laughs> we're gonna make like a t-shirt. Do royalties from that? Nina! Pinigay mo sa amin ng libre. But what the point is, kasama na yun sa project narrative natin. So, thank you for clearing it out that it was on a whim. And I say thank you because even I had other things that got to me saying that you know, the organization or like the camp called these girls para pampaingay. And 
for me, as a representative of the fans, I feel like I'm the de facto um, mouthpiece of the fans. Of course, we felt slighted because we were all rooting for you. So, parang we felt played. Yun lang naman ang sa akin, hindi naman personal. And I say personal because I think that your campaign now, medyo kasama pa rin yun sa mga naririnig-rinig natin, eh, naurong-sulong ka. Pero ngayon, hindi na to on a whim, Atisa. Yes. How long have you been training for this and what was the spark that was out there para na-realize mo? So sabi ako this year, hindi ka pinilit ni Oyel, hindi ka pinaringgan ng isang tita Lavinia, o kaya ng Jesson Cappuccino. <laughs> no, no, I, was, I have been preparing it. Uh, I have been preparing for this for a year now. Okay. And it is something that I wanted to do because I mentioned to you, Tita, that um, I set goals for myself. Okay. And I felt like after my world in business, I was already done with that. I have learned a lot, I've grown a lot, and I feel like I wanted a new challenge. I wanted to do something new. And I thought that there is a chance still for me to join pageantry because I was, I was 20 when I did Binibining Pilipinas and now I feel like I've grown a lot, I'm more mature, I have more wisdom and life experiences to share. I felt like I can do Miss Universe now. So I decided to do Miss Universe. Great! Atisa, take us to that very moment. Kasi alam naman natin, being girls, may mga camps kayo, mm -hmm. may mga groups of friends kayo, may mga core groups kayo. Can you take us to this moment na nagtawag ka na at Gusto mo nang i-announce sa kanila na go na ako because I'm sure ayaw lang nilang maging pushy pero nagaantay din lang sila ng go signal mo. Take us back. Well, the first one I messaged was Oyel. Okay. And oh, na, oh, solid yan. Okay. I, I messaged her. I was like, Ate G, can we talk? Because <laughs> I don't want to say Para break up uh, I, I don't want to say it mm. sa text. Mm. I, I want it to be a personal thing. So, siya yung muna kami message and then everyone else followed the people that I work with, the people that I find comfortable working with. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable working with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, naman. Kasi, di ba, okay, aminin na natin, minsan pagbaguhan ka, sometimes you're stuck talaga with people na tutulong sa'yo, wala ka naman nilabas na anda. But of course, it's a little different kapag hawak mo, kontrolado mo yung finances, you really have to pick the right people na comfortable ka. Yes. I would definitely understand. Mm -hmm. So now, do you have your solid team? Mm -hmm. So, uh, from my understanding, you're not affiliated with any camp now, no. so independent tayo. So now that you're independent, um, exciting sa amin to as pageant fans because I know that when pageant girls are independent, they can really achieve like their vision. Anong vision mo, Atisa, going into Miss Universe Philippines? Anong gusto mong atake? Before, very Barbie doll. Alam naman natin yan. <laughs> Nag-project talaga tayo na Barbie doll. Anong atake natin ngayon? I really want people to see how much I have grown, uh, how much more of a woman I am now and how much I have to offer wisdom wise, wisdom wise, life experience wise and I want them to see that I am the best bet that they can have for Miss Universe Philippines. I am. Uh, clothes, styling, everything is so visual these days. When you competed, meron na rin, meron na rin tayong social media exposure nun, but I feel like everything is on acid now. <laughs> In terms of your preparations for wardrobe and your whole look, the visuals, kamusta ang direction natin dun at least? Um, it's, it's something very different now because I'm used to playing to how I look, mm -hmm. which is the soft and mestiza look that, I, that really fits Miss International mm -hmm. um, criteria. So I was on that path before, but now I am trying to expose more of the womanly side that I have, that I have grown now, and I'm much more of a woman, and I can look fierce when I need to, and I can look strong when I want to. And there I am. All right, so everything is placado with you. Now let's move into the competition. Atisa, they're calling this year a bloodbath. Have you been checking out the competition? Because I'm sure they're out there. Um, I have seen some of my competitors accidentally, but I really try not to look for the girls because I'm sure it would just get into my head and I'm sure that I would just get anxious about it so I always have this mantra of just focusing on things that I can control okay and let me feel you in bed <laughs> it's a bloodbath girl <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure and I'm excited it's a bloodbath because everything is free for all like the restrictions are no longer in yeah. place so you have like a mix of really energetic new ones and then you also have a mix of like more senior girls who want to prove something so right now I guess we can say that you are in the middle of 
I don't know, something that we love in pageantry every year, that you're in the middle of this rivalry, there's there's this perceived rivalry between you and one of the strongest com um, competitors for Ilo Ilo, mm -hmm. um, Alexi Brooks. Now recently you guys got into this controversy, not by your liking, but by other people like fighting together. Anong message mo, Atisa, sa mga fans na nag-aaway-aaway, hindi pa naman ata kayo nag ni Alexi, <laughs> ano ba nangyayari? <laughs> I really think that the pageant team needs to change a little bit into focusing more on the positive side and making sure that we don't engage in any negativity because we've seen that once we engage in negativity, we are part of the problem already. So I think the best way to do a, to go about it, it to go about it is just to support your candidate and focus on cheering her on and making sure that he, she does her best and not bringing any other people down in the process. Uh, Atisa, what was this one lesson that you learned from competing in Miss International that you're going to bring to the table this time around? It's making sure that I show up. doesn't matter if I'm perfect or at my 100% when I show up. Because when you show up, there is progress. And progress is important no matter how small it is. That's actually quite new. I've never heard of this answer before, showing up. Because for me, it makes me nervous, Miss International, showing up. Bakit? Nalilate ba to si Atisa noon? Kasi, guys, nag-iingat tayo sa Miss International. Ayaw natin mga kandidata natin nalilate doon. Because they're very punctual. At yes. usually, kapag nalilate ang kandidata natin doon, direct hit tayo. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hindi tayo nananalo. Tandaan niya yan, guys. So, when you say showing up, like more on being present lang. Yes, being present and making sure that, because, you know, we're still people. Sometimes we wake up and it's not our best day. Sometimes we wake up and we don't feel good or pretty or even like, you know, like there's always that feeling. So what I mean with showing up is it doesn't matter where you are. It is your role. It is your job to show up. It is your job to be there. You just have to be there. You just have to show up. Ayan guys, kahit na nasa motor pa ako sa C5 ng Sunday, umagkita tayo kahit na late ako na isang oras. Magpapalive ako ng Sunday. But I, I like this. I like the, I like that there's something there's something new with what you're offering right now, like showing up. Of course, you're beautiful, you're tall. How can we not see you? Even if you don't feel like showing up, we will definitely see you. But I get what you're saying, especially kapag nakahilera ka with the most beautiful girls in the land, minsan ang tendency mo is mag-blend in o kaya naman hindi ko on point palagi. So, masasabi mo pa na on point ang atisa sa lahat Mm, lalo na social media girls, sinabihan mo ko noon na dapat social media butterfly ka na, lalo na social media, pangahawakan na ba natin yan? Well, one thing I can say is it doesn't matter how I feel inside, even if I feel naman, not baka the best. Naman, ano, baka naman, binabote mo na lahat. Diba? No, that's not what I mean, but what I mean is, tira mo tita, nakalimutan ko tuloy yung question mo. Ganun talaga? <laughs> ang sama na ng loob mo pero fight na fight ka pa rin sa labas. Pero gets ko naman yung idea na to be more present. Kasi at isa ito yung palagi namin sinasabi sa mga girls lalo na pag physically ha pag sobrang payat hmm. parang nawawala siya sa roster hindi namin siya maramdaman. The only way marirectify mo yun is kung larger than life yung personality niya. So with you I, I see the fire now guys kasi syempre before you were so delicate like lahat kami kung lalapitan ka namin, it seemed like we were all walking on eggshells, parang makakalas ka or something. Even sa height ng mga awayan natin, hindi nga kita inaaway ng gusto kasi baka mag-breakdown naman to. So, nakikita ko ngayon yung fire. Is this the fighting spirit na makikita natin sa Miss University? Oh, this is just the beginning. <laughs> the show hasn't even started yet. Nagpula pa siya, guys! Kontramita, kontramita talaga to. <laughs> Tayo. Do you know that the competition Miss Universe will be held in Mexico? Um, as a pageant fan, as someone in the pageant industry, ano mga iniisip mo na dapat pinapadala natin sa Mexico? Palagi nila akong tinatanong eh. Anong characteristics ang dapat pinapadala sa Mexico? Maybe someone named Atisa or something. <laughs> Someone who can give a great fight. 
Okay, oh, yeah. with, the, with the Latinas. Because you know the Latinas are fiery and competitive. So you need someone that can match their energy, especially on stage. Yes, yeah, definitely. And if we saw a glimpse of that from the drag show na paboritong paborito <laughs> namin, siguro makakakita na tayo ng mga buhay na ano, buhay na manok <laughs> habang naglalakad ang atisa. <laughs> Oo, yung mga lumiliyang playoff. So, Atisa, meron ba tayong aabangan ng mga pasabog sa mga moves? I know you're partnering with Ian, the great Ian, of course. May mga tweaks ba tayo sa pasarelang makikita natin? Oh, of natin? course, yeah. Everything will be new and better, but it will still have the essence of the Atisa that you guys saw in 2020. Okay. Ano yung strength mo, like yung number one talaga at the top of your list? I think that would be my self-awareness. I know myself the best now. And having self-awareness plays a lot into being able to present yourself the best and making sure that people see you at your best all the time. Okay. Um, you competed in 2018. Hindi naman tayo perfect kahit na nag-mature na lahat at medyo wiser na everything. What would you say is like an aspect of your pageantry um, preparation or your pageantry self that really needs improvement? Perfect. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I do think that I have a lot to improve mm -hmm. on, but I think I haven't left any stones unturned okay. when I'm prepar when I'm preparation in my preparation right now. So I don't think that there is anything that I would want to work on more now because I am working on everything. Kailan natin yung kung wala tayong susulat kay Atisa na. Dapat wala. Kailan natin? Okay. Atisa, I will be wrapping this up, but I have like a few things to ask you. It's not Q&A. It's not a speech. I just want to ask your opinion about these things. Okay. Game na. Easy pa opinion. <laughs> opinion na. Okay. Alright. Unang una, siguro, um, let's talk about the elephant in the room. You're competing against a possible senior citizen. Pag manalo mamaya ang representante ng Miss Universe Quezon City at manalo si Miss um, Jocelyn Cobales, posibleng makakalaman mo ang isang 69-year-old competition. How do you feel about all of these ages mixing together? I think it's a great move for the Miss Universe Philippines and Miss Universe organization to include people of all ages because there is this big issue of ageism in our society, especially when it comes to women. So I feel like this move proves that women are not only good up to a certain age or up to a certain point of their lives, that they can contribute to something bigger than themselves no matter what age they are, and they can share their life stories and wisdom and join Miss Universe Philippines. And I thank you. <laughs> good, thank you. All right. Um, Atisa, I know that prior to coming back, you had like your thing in hosting, in appearing in certain um, like pageants or events. I want to talk about male pageantry a little bit. Okay. Because we opened up with male pageantry, like even I opened up to the idea of supporting male pageantry, but somehow it's so chaotic, it's muddled. How can you elevate male pageantry, at least in the Philippines? Do you have any idea? I am actually not very much aware of what goes into male pageantry. Because just like you, I, I don't watch male pageants. As just because it's not a big thing in the okay. Philippines, which is surprising because female pageants are a big thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know if they already have advocacies. Maybe that is something that they can explore on, something mm -hmm. that they can contribute to something bigger than themselves. Maybe that is something that male pageants can explore, I suppose. All right. Um, right now, Miss Universe Philippines, I, I feel like they are really pushing towards a partnership with tourism. Mm -hmm. They've dabbled on this for the past couple of years, but now they're like more vocal about it, they're more visual about it. They have campaigns saying, love Philippines mm -hmm. and things like that. So when you get crowned, if you get crowned, <laughs> sorry. When? <laughs> yeah, when? Ayan. <laughs> What do you think is lacking in all this campaign to boost tourism? Grabe naman. Lacking oh, talaga. Sure, <laughs> lacking. Sure, pero doon ka na eh. Mag-hold back pa ba tayo? I think it is really awareness. Mm -hmm. As much as there are awareness for places like El Nido, Palawan, and the 
the best places in the Philippines for tourism. I do think that there is a lot of undiscovered spots and undiscovered places all around the Philippines that needs awareness. Just like in my province, Quezon province, I went there and I visited places I've never visited before and I am from Quezon province just because people don't know that they exist. So I do think that if you just make sure that people know that it exists, people will go there. So yung mga vloggers dyan, magtrabaho pa kayo. <laughs> Pero share mo na rin, ano yung place na hindi mo pa napuntahan sa Quezon na parang bago sa'yo? I didn't know that we had a five-level waterfalls in Atimonan. It's called Bantake Falls. And it's very beautiful. It's, it's like mystical. And honestly, you know, when I get asked, Tita, ano bang purpose ng pageantry? Ang una ko ang iniisip ng purpose ng pageantry is, of course, yung the, the social purpose ng pageantry. Palagi ko sinasabi, lalo ng pandemic, ang init ng ulo ko ng pandemic eh. Nag-tiktok lahat ng mga girls eh. Sabi ko parang, girls, dapat nagpo-post kayo sa mga Instagram pages ninyo ng numbers, ng infographics. Eh, syempre, titang-tita ko. Syempre, parang galit na galit sa akin. Ano ba? Bakit ka ba nangingialam? But the point is, ako ang nakikita kong purpose ng mga pageant girls, if not for like social purposes, yung mag-introduce ng mga places. Kasi, at least, when you competed at Bini Bini, number kayo. Yes. Ngayon, may sash na yes. kayo na nakalagay yung mga um, places, places ninyo, yes. mga municipalities, mga provinces ninyo. So, kayo yung dapat nagsishare kung ano yung nalalaman nyo sa mga lugar niya. So, ayan, puntahan nyo sa Atimonan. <laughs> Ngayon lang napuntahan ni Atisa. Yeah. Yeah. Solid ka, solid na tatakeso. <laughs> okay. Hindi maiiwasan, especially if you're one of the heavy favorites in the competition, hindi maiiwasan yung rivalry in pageantry, awayan sa pageantry. How do you feel about this? Is this something that you can brush aside because it's part of like yearly pageantry? Or ito ba yung nagpapa-excite sa pageantry? O kailangan tigilan na natin yan? Personally, this is something that doesn't affect me that much because I don't watch videos, I don't check posts, I make sure that only I only focus on things that I can't control. But I do think that it still affects the girls to some degree. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you accidentally read stuff. You don't even seek for the post. But Algorithm! It, yeah. And I think it is something that needs to change because it still affects the girls. And at the end of the day, if we engage in negativity it will just foster more negativity and we don't know when it will end and how it will end so i think it's just best to if you support a candidate you like you just focus on the candidate you like and support them and make sure that they do well and if you don't like other girls maybe just keep it to yourself like you don't need to say everything you think out loud i agree i agree yeah. <laughs> i agree and uh sabi ko nga Maganda yung last question ko kasi kakabit natin dyan. I like na you're, you're not supposed to be like super vocal about everything. Last question ko. Para kay Oyen to. <laughs> okay, last question ko. How do you feel about the whole situation of let's say pageant girls in the middle of their campaign with, you know, uh, forging relationships with admins or with vloggers also to boost their popularity, to boost their exposure, but then right after the pageant, unfollow, fly na lahat, tapos sasali ulit. How do you feel about these things? I mean, ang isang admin ba, ang isang vlogger ba, may karapatan ba na outright hindi sumuporta? Not by bashing the girl, but by not posting or like radio silencing the whole campaign of that candidate. How do you feel about this? I think at the end of the day, these are personal blogs. These are okay. things that you feel and these are things that you think and these are things that you prefer. So I do think that even you, Tita Lavinia, if, if you choose not to support a girl, it is totally fine. I, I don't see any problem with that because personally, I wouldn't want anyone to tell me what to do also if I don't want to do something. But I like this because, una una guys, uh, hindi naman kami nagbabayaran mo guys, para magpapost, nakakaloka naman kayo. Alright, so Atisa, I am convinced, a lot of people are convinced, there's fire in you, and uh, maganda rin kasi ngayon, hindi lang ang laban mo is someone, oh matangkat na yan, maganda Miss Tisa, ilaban mo na yan. May, there's a science to it all now, I don't know, I, I feel like there's more of like the technical side in your preparations now. And sometimes when you're technical, when you're like super hands-on now, iba rin kasi noon sa camps eh, lalo na pag mukha ka manika, tatratuhin ka talagang manika. 
Pero ngayon, mukhang ikaw na lahat to. <laughs> you're calling the shots, tama ba? I am. You are calling yes. the shots. Alright, since you're calling the shots, Atisa, now is your time to invite everyone. Convince them to support you. Iwanan niyo na yung mga manok niyo. Wait, yun. Siyempre, ano na tayo ngayon eh. High level na tayo ngayon. <laughs> I think if, if they like other girls, I okay am lang not, naman. I am not, ano naman eh. I'm not, paano ba yun? Territorial. Oh, I mean, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Kahit lima kami, you like. I'm okay with that. Tatlo mo na lang. May tatlo lang. Kasi kaya tatlo naman yung corona. But yeah, I, I am asking everyone to please support me and make sure that we don't spread any negativity when we are supporting girls or other candidates that are competing. And I'm excited to show you guys what I have been working on. I'm excited to show you Atisa 2.0. Ayan. So, Atisa, naka-red ka ngayon. Doesn't matter kung birthday mo o hindi. Kung kapanapanalo ka, ipapanalo mo yung MUPH na yan. At uh, diretso tayo sa Mexico. Maraming maraming salamat. Maraming salamat, Quezon. Ayan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you po. Thank you.